if the Milky Way galaxy were the size of the United States, our whole star system would only be a sphere two inches across, and the sun itself would be the size of a period at the end of a sentence. And the nearest star system to ours would be about a football field's distance away, and all other stars are roughly that distance from one another. And the Milky Way is just one out of a billion galaxies in the observable universe. When you compare the sheer size of the universe, human life looks not only tiny, but about as significant as the bacteria that you kill without thought every time you brush your teeth. Now with that in mind, try and imagine that there is an extra-dimensional being of unlimited power. This being is both omniscient and can create and just as easily destroy interdimensional infinite universes on a whim. Now imagine this eternal extra-dimensional... Yeah, I can imagine that and it seems... I see the problem I have with a lot of this, this idea of the conscious creator is... Uh, the sheer absurdity of it and it's just uh, it seems to me just to be a projection of our own consciousness into that which we did not understand but let's watch the rest of this now. omnipotent being micromanaging and observing in an obsessive compulsive manner over the daily behavior of all humans as well as the depths of our belief in him so it's like the celestial uh dictator idea i guess that christopher hitchens used to as, as he referred to it It'd be interesting to see where this goes now, so let's have a look. much the same way we would observe plaque except for the fact that if plaque doesn't worship us in the exact correct manner we demand we'd be hard pressed to selectively punish them individually for all eternity and actually this omniscient entity would only really obsess with the portion of humanity that was able to be lucky enough to not only suspend disbelief but also find the one true correct method in which to offer up worship to this deity out of the tens of thousands of religions that have come and gone throughout the millennia. This is why you find many thoughtful atheists who look at the enormity of existence and cannot find their spirituality in the existing religions on offer, nor can they see a divine spark with regards to consciousness and life. All of this is an accident. Thus, I'm not saying God does or does not exist, but as we understand the universe, it seems very strange that a creature with this amount of power would not only look like us, but actually care about things like sloth, gluttony, avarice, among other sins. Why are you assuming that this uh, being exists? I mean, this, the whole burden of proof, if, I mean, I'm only two minutes in, two minutes 24 in, so I don't know where it's going to go for, but uh, we're, it's, a human, it's humanizing that which we do not understand, basically, this. And I'm, I'm a pantheist, I don't even consider myself, well, an atheist, really, but a pantheist is what I like to call myself because I I think there is meaning to be found in the, the grandness of the universe where it's just, it's good. it could be also that we are looking at reality inside out where standard science would have you believe that matter gives rise to consciousness rather than the other way around but either way any way you well matter give it matter consciousness we've known consciousness isn't really fully understood as to what creates it fully philosophically or scientifically there's obviously theories and ideas um but i don't really understand what the point is there you look at it we do not understand the universe that we inhabit nor especially the uniqueness of consciousness and in an upcoming video i'm going to try and explain why it will probably be impossible for us to ever do so without assistance that is. Also for clarity, I have for many years considered myself an agnostic theist, just making this clear before the inevitable rebuttal videos from the skeptic community surface and try to manufacture controversy. But just so we are clear, I am not Christian nor do I identify as a Christian. While some atheists are content with not believing in God and allowing others their choice to do the opposite, there is a loud and screeching minority that has made it their job to tell you that if you believe in God, you are stupid. Even For sure. I'd agree with that, to be honest. Um, 
but that just generally comes from people over people's own insecurities and this is the internet after all I mean it's not always a friendly place unfortunately uh, I mean I know personally Christians and Muslims who are definitely not stupid in the sense of IQ or intellect uh, they just happen to believe in an interpretation of religion which I don't myself find personally so actually so far I'm in the agnostic theist thing uh, I mean I kind of don't see what the point is of the first bit that we've had covering some kind of uh, definitions of an abstract god as it were but anyway it's gone erudite and very intelligent men like Richard Dawkins proselytize that's right they proselytize by explaining that God does not exist and people who believe in a prime mover are in his words delusional and he and people like him including oh sure yeah I mean I've read, I've read the God delusion by Dawkins and um, while he has some good points and uh, um, the point of him that he goes into about moderate religion therefore creating the more well not justifying but allowing the more extreme forms of religion to exist it's quite a hard one to absorb um but he can be quite a divisive figure for sure and um as to whether that's useful is arguable sam harris and the late christopher hitchens are very well spoken and educated men the problem is they and their lesser parrots only argue the concept of God on a philosophical or scientific level, but fail to observe the logical conclusions of their crusade. Now that is an interesting point. Um, because God, um, if there is a God, then it is a part of the um, fabric of the reality, right? So it's the, it's part of the physical world or at least a process in the physical world so by it's very that nature of that how can it not be a scientific question um so we'll see where you're gonna go with this um, but yeah i mean that doesn't make sense to me i mean if, it, if there's a primary like you said like you say a primary mover if it was um then how can that not have a physical basis or some kind of uh, be understood scientifically and uh, be observable in the universe against religion while many that advocate atheism and that atheists in Dawkins words can be happy and moral people and I do not disagree with this at all advocates of atheism offer nothing no substitute for the vast majority of people that do believe in God nor do they even contemplate let alone speak of the social vacuum that has been created in places like Europe with the fall of Christianity I would disagree with that um, even thinking thinkers from you know a long time ago Nietzsche Friedrich Nietzsche dealt with this question quite explicitly in uh, his philosophical work the Ubermensch is the uh, the overman, the self-created man. That's just one example of, off the top of my head. The death religion is a concept in religion um, philosophy has been been dealt with for a long time. Uh, generally, it comes to the conclusion of existentialism, which is creating your own meaning and uh, living by your decisions, creating your own morality. In Nietzsche's philosophy, the idea was uh, the Ubermensch was obviously self-created values free from religious authorities or slave moralities as Nietzsche would say, call it but it's also this. While Dawkins, Harris and Hitchens to their credit were equally vocal in their denunciations of all religions given the society in which they operate in and the potential populations that would be receptive to their arguments the only real target for derision in the West is always singular. Targeting Christianity is always the easy option because it has always been an integral part of most of the West for at least a thousand years. Criticism of Islam, on the other hand, has always carried with it the credible threat of violence, as we have now seen across the Western world. But this is the thing. Christianity has been a pillar of the Western world throughout its ascendance to its current prominence and dominance. Western culture has shaped Christianity just as much as Christianity has shaped Western culture. 
The morality expressed and enforced in the teachings of the varied sects is uniquely Western in temperament and structure. This absolutism produced the modern world around us. It fosters charity, community, education, collectivism, and most importantly, family. This is what you're fighting when you fight Christianity, and this is what Christians are defending. The vast majority of practicing Christians don't care if snakes can talk, if parting the Red Sea actually ever happened. So it seems the argument you're advancing here is uh, an argument for morality, I suppose, saying that, I, I'm assuming, I haven't seen the rest of it yet, so you're arguing that um, morality as you see it, and it's a subjective one, is true or good or altruistic, I guess. Therefore, it's right or correct to believe in it, which I would disagree with. And uh, just to frame it in the Nietzsche again, it's uh, I think Nietzsche called a lot of this um, the philosophy of the last man. It's the idea of comfort and being very um, just accepting the slave morality that you're taught in Christianity, but I've never watched this enough. Which what I'm saying is uh, just because it's the prevailing morality doesn't make it a crime. Or if Jesus was really able to turn water into wine. They care about their communities and culture as well. I would uh, say that many Christian virtues and values are um, worthwhile, like I think compassion's good to a degree as long as it's deserved. And it's important as a human being, I think, to cultivate compassion as much as you can do. Um, forgiveness is a virtue in Christianity is a complex one because I think to be forgiveness, for, take forgiveness to the nth degree kind of makes you a weak person actually in a lot of ways. It, you know, you can't forgive everything. But anyway, that's a deeper point. So just carry this on. Well, as the belief that there is a higher power that helps guide their own moral agency. When your average fedora-equipped atheist quote-unquote debates Christians, they attack the historical validity of scripture. The obvious logical missteps of an ancient text and smugly congratulate themselves for being so much smarter than those. Um, that's obviously incredibly journalistic on the people who happen to be sceptical or not believe in God. I mean, it's quite amusing. There's the, obviously there's a fedora wearing, fedora bro meme or kind of cliche that's out there. Right? But um, I think most people who are generally quite interested in secular and trying to determine the truth of all these things are truth seekers really not just that and yeah that does exist out there the fedora bro kind of just regurgitating lines from dawkins and without i say any uh thought with it but there are others so it's not just that just theist nincompoops all the while missing the point entirely Science disproves the validity of claims in the Bible. Sure, I'm not disputing that, but I'm talking about the benefits of religion as a social institution. It has certain benefits historically, but uh, most atheists or secularists are concerned with the future and where do we go from next? Because, and also it's a bloody history as well, religion. You can't deny that. If you can, it's one sided to say that Christianity and all religions have had a completely bloodless and history because i'm sure as you're aware as well as i am that's completely uh, false where is the logic behind alienating demonizing and ultimately removing an essential moral and social foundation that humans in one way or another have embraced since prehistory again you're talking about the um, morality as if it's a fixed value it's not it's relative and it's self-determined in the ideal. Again, I'm talking from a Nietzschean ideal again. Um, and yeah, I probably am aping quite a lot of his thought. But I think it's because he got quite a lot of stuff right. From Western society. And I think generally the reason to want to get rid of religious moralities and frameworks is precisely because they promise too much and deliver too little, to be honest. In my view, um, part of life should be determining truth 
and following a true course, whether that be and by giving this answer I squarely admit that Christianity and a lot of religious systems have framed on morality um, but as it kind of might be I kind of believe in the Nietzschean existential position of you form your own morality based on your experience and your overcoming yourself and Christianity is often too much too much used as a as a crutch I guess. and replacing it with oh yeah that's right nothing but a sucking vacuum that is currently being filled by another and arguably extremely virulent and aggressive religion that finds atheism ironically to be among the worst crimes a man can commit but it's not really a vacuum it's a and it's just all the only difference because and one very important point actually about atheism and morality and all the rest of it I'd like to make is you're suggesting that atheism, all atheism implies is lack of belief in God which is a superstructure, a religious superstructure which makes no sense it, it's completely irrational the belief that there is some a conscious being, which is the most ridiculous aspect of it who monitors everything celestial kind of uh, overseer the idea is ridiculous um, so as far as I can see we have two options here we can succeed to religious dogmas and give up the pursuit of knowledge or we can just give up on the word God and I've been saying this for a long time to a lot of people who I've had this debate with the word God is useless it's linguistically abstract it means different things to everybody whenever you say that word and it's it's kind of meaningless so I feel in terms of linguistically and actually conceptually mankind needs to evolve beyond that because I mean in my own personal viewpoint me for me god is the universe god likes, there is actually there is a higher purpose and it's the cosmic bond pantheism so it's nature and self-preservation that gives it meaning when you say you don't need god to be a moral person i totally agree with you i'm glad you made that concession about the morality i don't either but 86 percent of the planet does that's an interesting figure actually 86 percent and that 16% that has no God are generally concentrated in two places, the West and the Far East. Both places, I might add, suffering from demographic implosion. Theories on the evolution of religion tend toward two camps. One argues that religion is a mental artifact co-opted from brain functions that evolved for other tasks. While the other contends that religion benefited our ancestors, rather than being a byproduct of other brain functions, it is an adaptation in its own right. Because I think generally it's because we're tribal creatures, unfortunately by design, the brain is programmed for to categorize basically. In this explanation, natural selection slowly purged human populations of the non-religious. As the non-religious are doing now by self-selecting small families or no children at all. But neither of these theories tell us why religion has been the glue that has held human societies together since the Stone Age. Science is an incredible and important tool for furthering our understanding of the universe and oftentimes comes into conflict with religious teachings. Science can become too dogmatic for sure and obviously it can come in too entrenched too but the only thing I'd say in response to that as it being a positive is it's a constant progression of knowledge and discovery and new boundaries and I'm kind of repeating Neil deGrasse Tyson's line but it's an important one it's an evolution it evolves for religion is a set of laws immutable laws which never change and there's a difference crucially 
Science, though, and it should be said, has been and is currently profoundly handicapped when it comes to explaining consciousness, which is an important, if not the most important component when it comes to understanding reality. A rational mind should obviously adjust their understanding of the universe to scientific findings. However, only an irrational person would advocate for the abandonment of the essential functions of religion and the unique character of our species' spiritual nature. What you just said there is quite interesting, but also complex. Spiritual nature is, again, it's one of those linguist, linguistic words that people use, but it's a very broad and open word uh, in abstract language. What does that actually mean? For one person, that could mean uh, I don't know, meditating. One person could mean being in nature. That's my only issue with that. Which, uh, a good synthesis and example is Japan. In Japan, the number of people that believe in God, for a want of a better word, is very small. However, whether a believer or not, the religious rituals associated with the various stages of life, birth, coming of age, death, as well as traditional festivals and ceremonies are intertwined in the Japanese culture. Whether a believer or not, People wanting babies, hoping for a good outcome in an important test, wanting good luck for the new year, or health for their ill family member, will head to a shrine, give their offering, and make their prayers. The moral codes of Buddhism as well as the sensitivity of Shintoism are intertwined with the culture, and while the vast majority of people have no belief in God, the spiritual, social, and cultural black hole that is atheism has never taken root in Japan. I actually kind of like the point you've made there um, about cult, spirituality and culture being entwined in some level, divorced from God. And to be honest, that's kind of what I advocate in my pantheism, I guess. It's a feeling of connection to the uh, cosmo, cosmos in the abstract and philosophical sense. Um, and it's a humanist position really it's saying be good because we both we both come from over there we both you know and that is a higher ideal and a purpose it doesn't have to include god now the point is you don't have to subscribe to total belief to yeah i mean look i kind of started off this video feeling very this is going to be I actually take your key point on i think which I, I think your key point is dogmatic atheism it doesn't get us anywhere and is uh, just i guess too nihilistic and destructive uh, uh, a current a stream in in thought and i think this often happens in any movement or philosoph philosoph philosophical movement or intellectual movement is that you do have streams of extreme uh, of extremes i guess and uh, like you the fedora bro kind of cliche which you put in there to see the value of traditional spiritual guidance and morality in contrast in place of religion in the modern west there is moral relativism and nihilism which is the new religion of modernity, where everything and anything is acceptable, so long as it's backed up by and couched in a grandiloquent argument. Interesting. Look, I, look I've just seen the, net, the last bit where you to say that we've retreated into nihilism and decadent materialist decadence, I guess. Um, but there is a third way beyond those two methods, look, which I guess it basically comes to the same conclusion of similar conclusions to your video which is um existential create your own meaning believe in ideals self-created uh, morality and uh, don't be too much of a dick to other people i guess it's quite simple but it's an interesting video that's some of my thoughts on that one but no vortex subscribe to me if you find any of this interesting and uh, leave your comments in below and we'll very much invite in discussion. Uh, potentially this has been a bit muddled, but I've, I've done my best to just uh, keep things on track with my uh, thoughts. And yeah, so that's what
that's my response. Cheers.